Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Backstage with Fred Cooper. I am very lucky tonight because one of my favorite stars is here, and her name is, of course, K-Star. Did you notice that they put it on the on the billboard outside, S-T-A-R? Oh, no, they didn't put oh, the other Oh, I've been one working on. so long, I've I got two R's now. you got two R's. Two well. R's in my name now. <laughs> You know, I, I was I was reading something uh, the other day in our in our paper, and uh, I saw that uh, you used to be a Grand Ole Opry. Yes, I did. I started out singing country music. That's all I sang. I yeah. sang uh, uh, "Wreck on the Highway" and "Mother Put My Little Shoes Away." <laughs> <laughs> I did all the good songs. Well, yeah, but you're from Oklahoma. Yes, I am. And, and uh, you go back off it. In fact, I just came from Oklahoma. Yeah. They named a, well, they said a street after me. Mm -hmm. But in my hometown, we don't have any streets. <laughs> we, got, we got the highway, and then there's a road goes off the highway to Doherty, Oklahoma. That's where I was born. And that's where they're going to give me the road or mm -hmm. the street. Mm -hmm. So now they call it uh, K-Star Trails. <laughs> and, but the road... The road that they were going to name after me went from the highway right through Doherty, right straight to the cemetery. <laughs> and I said, I don't believe I want that named after me. <laughs> so now they got it trails and it goes right over the railroad tracks. Oh, I'll tell you. Um, let's go back a few years. Let's go back uh, to Bob Wills, Texas okay. Playboy. Um, how long were you with them? Uh, when did you go with them? I was them? so young. Oh, God. Fred, You're I was so young. young. Uh, true. I, I'm no, but, I'm serious. Well, I but, told you the last time you were here. You know, you got some of the finest skin I've ever seen. You're a pretty lady. I'm an Indian. Well, I know that. We'll just get some fire water. Well, we don't we, have we don't have much going for us, but skin we got. Skin you got. Skin we got. Yeah, you're very nice. Uh, I sang yeah. with uh, uh, the Lycrus Doughboys. Do you remember them? No. Well, I sang with the Lycrus Doughboys, and I sang with uh, Bill Boyd and his Cowboy Ramblers. I sang with Kokomo Crocker and his crew. Where were these? Where were they? They were all in Texas, Oklahoma. Oh, so you, yeah. tra you traveled around? Right, sure. Uh -huh. And I started singing when I was about, uh, Lord, I don't even know when I started to sing. I started singing. My mother raised chickens. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it was during the Depression, so my mother raised chickens, and we only had a radio. Nobody else had, you know, record players and all that stuff. We didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would learn songs from the radio mm -hmm. and I would get out there with my apple box and I'd sit on the ground and I'd play this apple box and I would sing these songs to those chickens and they'd go <laughs> <laughs> that was the best audience I ever had nobody sassed me <laughs> nobody said I was good bad or indifferent but they all went <laughs> <laughs> but that was my first audience and I, I I guess I must have been about eight or nine years old and my Aunt Nora thought that was the cutest thing she'd ever seen in her life mm -hmm. so she kept telling my mother Annie you we gotta she's gotta be in show business come on and it was time when they had all the amateur hours and yo-yos well no it wasn't big like that every town had an amateur Oh, so okay. every Saturday, all the kids showed up. Mama showed up to get the crystal and the silverware and the stuff they gave away on mm -hmm. Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And um, so my Aunt Nora finally wore my mother down and she said, Annie, if you let her go on this amateur hour, I said, if she does good, she's yours. If she does bad, she's mine. <laughs> and my mother said, well, you can't beat it. You know, can't beat a deal like that. So I went on the show and I won third prize. Mm -hmm. So that gave me a crack the next week to try to win first prize, mm -hmm. which I did, because I had that yo-yo going and I, walking the dog and going around the world <laughs> and singing at the same time. At the same time. Potatoes are cheaper, tomatoes are cheaper, now's the time to fall in love. <laughs> the butcher, the baker. <laughs> I think they, they were so confused with what I was doing, they gave it to me because they just went, please, get her off. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have a hook. <laughs> didn't have one small enough for kids. <laughs> you are tiny. Well, you're, I'm short, you're, you're, but I'm not tiny. <laughs> I, I, he knows about that, I don't. <laughs> um, then I also noticed, uh, uh, let's talk Big Ben's. Uh, well, no, we didn't get to, to uh, Bob Wills yet. Let's talk about Bob Wills. You know, that's what, the most famous cowboy singers and... Well, I did, um, I, I did I did Grand Ole Opry, uh, but I 
my kinfolks didn't, they never got any of the records that I made for Capitol because they were popular music things. And it wasn't until I did I'll Never Be Free with Ernie Ford. Mm -hmm. And that hit those Arbuckle Mountains and my kinfolks came out of the woodwork. Is that right? And they came, and it was so funny because I would send my mother and dad a pickup truck for Christmas because I was doing good. It's just that popular music was not hitting that those mountains, that you know. Mm -hmm. And so they kept saying to my daddy, Harry, what'd you say she's doing out there in Hollywood? You know, I think they thought I was selling my bones. Because <laughs> they never heard my records and they didn't know what in the world, you know, that my dad kept saying, she sings good. out there, she's <laughs> singing, doing records. And they said, how come we don't hear any of them? Well, they didn't hear them because they didn't play popular music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I did I'll Never Be Free with Ernie Ford and that really did it. They finally came and said, Harry, my God, she's right. She does sing. <laughs> she's pretty good, yeah. too, isn't she? <laughs> loud. She's loud. She's good. Um, still didn't get to Bob Wells, though. Well, Tell I didn't sing with Bob Wells very long. I didn't sing with him very long. Uh, we did a thing. Do you remember when they used to have the great big Coliseum things, when they had the shows with the horses prancing and the Indians rushing yeah. in and the, this happening? Well, I did a song about a horse, mm -hmm. and this horse, well, I guess it was before dog became man's best friend, this horse was this man's best friend, and I sang this song, and this fellow with this horse acted it out, and I was so short and so young, and they had the spotlight hit me, but they had to hunt for me, because they put me on a box finally, mm -hmm. and I sang this song, and I did that for about six weeks with with him and his big organization. But other than that, I don't really know the man. Well, that was enough. Well, it seemed I mean, like at the time, it seemed like too much that's sometimes. That's more than most folks have Yeah, been. oh, you know sure. Yeah, yeah, I was famous, famous. Proud, famous. I was proud. Yeah, I bet you were. That was nice. And then you went with, um, with the popular music big bands? Yes, I sang with Joe Venuti. Remember him, the swing violinist? Yes. And uh, I guess if anybody is my mentor, it would be Joe Venuti. And I sang with Joe every summer because I was well, very young. And my mother would travel with me as my sister. Mm -hmm. And I could sing up on the bandstand and nobody ever asked me how old I was because I was dark and, and I didn't sing like a, a child. And I was fat. And when you're short and fat and dark and sing like a grown up, they don't ask you how old you are. And I didn't volunteer. And I said, you have to ask my sister, you know. And that made everything all right. But if they had known how young I was, I was like about 12 and a half or 13 years old. Oh, I'm up there not. singing in these, in, these, uh, in hotels mm -hmm. where they're serving cocktails. Mm -hmm. now, they could have closed here, that whole hotel. You were out here then, though. No, I was in... Memphis, I was in Texas. Oh, you were traveling around? Yeah, I was with oh, Joe. Okay. Wherever he okay. band played, I sang. And then I one, one a year, I think it was maybe the second year that I was with him, the second uh, summer mm -hmm. vacation, uh, I sang with Glenn Miller. I sang with Bob Crosby. This is all in one summer. Joe Venuti, and then Bob Crosby, and then Glenn Miller, and then I went home and back to school. Good night. And I wasn't you, 14 you and I, 14, I was yeah. just 14. <laughs> In July, I turned 14. Is that know? right? Sure. Um, who, uh, who else did you, you, you sang with uh, a big band for well, a Well, sure, I sang, uh, later on, I while. sang with uh, Charlie Barnett. Right, right. And uh, I do a lot of uh, things with what they call the ghost bands now, the Winnie Herman band. Yes. And the Benny Goodman band, mm -hmm. you know, Stan mm -hmm. Kenton band. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do those shows. Do you? Mm-hmm. Glenn, I even did some things with the Glenn Miller sound. That was interesting because was nobody, nobody knows I ever made a record with Glenn Miller. And when they say, K-Star sang with Glenn Miller, they go, what? <laughs> she did what? <laughs> I, I did two songs. I did Baby Me and Love with a Capital U. Wait. Is, now, when they you were sing, never popular, when, when I might you, When you sing, <laughs> not like Wheel of Fortune. No, 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 no. That was a goodie. Uh, did uh, you do any work with uh, Tex Benneke now? Uh, we used to at uh, Disneyland. Oh, uh, okay. Disneyland sure, sure. a lot of times. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we've had uh, we've had a lot of those big bands. I'd love to have one big band. Of course, this is a good band too. This is a good band. You know, he's, Buddy Freed. Buddy's yes. excellent. Excellent. You've been working with him for a while. Yes, too, right? for quite a long time. I had uh, I had another conductor, Frank Ortega. They I call him Frankie Frank. Ortega. Yes. And Frank passed away, and uh, he presented me with Buddy Freed. Oh, nice. And uh, I got 
lost one very sweet, talented man, but I got another very sweet, you, talented man. Frank was with you a long time, though, wasn't he? Yes, about 30 years. Yes. 25 years, years yes. or so. But I got to tell the audience, you know, I was down at uh, Palm Springs at the, uh, um, what do they call it, Terry? Desert Charities. Desert Charities. And, oh, recently. Uh, recently. Yeah. Was that February? Uh -huh. February. And I thought that show would never end. And uh, finally, Bob Hope and Dolores came out, and K-Star came out, and just pulled their chestnuts right out of the fire. Everybody came alive, and, and Miss Starr did such a marvelous she was, Dolores, job. Dolores, you know, was a girl singer. Oh, yes, I and know. And Dolores and I are very good friends, and she called me, and she said, this is probably going to be the very last time that uh, Bob will be doing anything uh, other than just, you know, lending his name and things like that. And... Uh, come and do the show with us. It's going to be the last one. Oh, I, nice. If I'd have had to cancel the world, yeah, you yeah. know, I would have done it. You know what amazed me about him, though? I, I, I've seen him before, and he, he's, um, you know, he, he, he acts older, of course. But the minute he got on stage, it was like you flipped a switch on. Put a nickel in him and yeah. he runs. <laughs> and he remembered every word to that song he did. I couldn't believe it. It was just like a different person yeah. up there. And then you, you, uh, you were great. I have to tell you. I'm going to be in Palm Springs in November. I have signed to do six months with the Fabulous Follies. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I hear and that's I'll be marvelous. There. I'll be there for six months. How great. How great. That's marvelous. Well, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> well, of course it will be. Of course it will be. So what have you, what, what, you, know, what have you got in your future do you, besides the six months of <sighs> Follies? Well, um, Got anything coming up that we should know about? I, j I got back from Europe with Pat Boone. Um, How's I've he to work with? Uh, Pat's fine. I thought I was going to have to join his church, but I didn't have to. <laughs> I didn't have to. He's the sweetest man. He owns about 19 wristwatches, and he can't tell time. I'll tell you that. <laughs> he was late for everything but the show. <laughs> and uh, so, but he, he, w he believes in, you know, what he believes oh, in. Yeah. But he doesn't preach. And, boy, he had a... He had an audience on that bus. If he'd wanted to preach, he would. We would have been trapped. Yep. <laughs> but uh, he didn't do any of that. But it was. It was fun. It was real. How long were you over there? We w we were over there about seven, eight weeks, and we were in England and Scotland and Wales and mm -hmm. all over. How we ended nice. up. Our last date was at the Palladium. How nice! Mm -hmm. How nice! It was very nice. And um, next month. Uh, which is almost upon us. Mm -hmm. I'm going to meet Jim Neighbors, who is sometimes known as Gomer. Right. And Jim is like my little brother. I gave him his first job in Las Vegas, so he he and I are like kin folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm going to do a, a thing with him called the Summer Symphony, and he lives in Whitefish, Montana. I thought he was in Hawaii. Well, he's got still got his oh, two places, got his places in Hawaii, in but listen. <laughs> Well, that's nice. You know, nice. they say, where do you live? I live in the air. <laughs> you know, I'm on an airplane every time I'm going someplace else. <laughs> but Jim uh, loves Montana. It's nice, it's quiet. And since he's had his surgery mm -hmm. recently, he had the liver transplant, right. which he's doing very well now. Good. And yeah. I think he needs a place that is quiet. Now, they can say all they want to about Honolulu being the place to go to relax. That's not a place to go to relax. <laughs> that's a place to go to throw sand on everybody. It's just a place to to go to have honeymoons and romances and <laughs> that sort of stuff but it's not a place to sit down and sort of like readjust your life and uh, I think Montana is that place for him it's quiet it's beautiful it's serene and he loves it well I'm gonna what about family you want to talk about family uh, sure I've got a family I have a daughter, mm -hmm. and you might be interested to know she's a hang glider. And last year, <laughs> she, uh, last year she was, and she's in the uh, Guinness World Book of Records. Really? She was the woman who had the longest distance ride uh, on a hang glider mm -hmm. in the world. Not just in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. not just in America, but the world. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Is your name really star? Is her name star? Well, not her married name was y is Yardley, Yardley. but uh, my name was Starks, S T A R K S, and country people spell things exactly like they hear them or like they mm -hmm. pronounce them. And I started getting fan mail into the radio station, Catherine uh, Stokes, Starch, Staunch, and finally one of them came in and says, Catherine stinks. <laughs> 
and the manager <laughs> decided that we better make a change. So mm -hmm. I, I really was upset with that because I thought me, my dad might think I was not proud of our family name. Mm. And I said, well, I don't mind changing it, but my daddy's got to be there. And so we started with the S. And that was okay with everybody. The T, the A, the R. Everybody said, oh, that's perfect, the star. And I was just a kid, but I said, no, if it's going to be star, I want two R's. I didn't know that oh, here I was going to be a one R girl. Well, you are the star, but it's a... Uh, I want to be I, a two R girl. I am sorry. I didn't even see that. I'm really sorry. That's all right. That. No, that's all right. No. That's all right. Um, go ahead with the family. I, I that's it. it in there. I uh, and I have that. a grandson, uh -huh. Paul Yardley. And uh, he works for a, s a cinematographer. Oh, good. And I have one adopted daughter, Donna. Mm -hmm. And I have an adopted brother, Bill, in Oklahoma City. And that's it. Well, how about that's that? Us. That's us. That's the family, yeah. Not many of us, and we're fading fast. <laughs> you are a delight. Nobody to carry on my daddy's name. Not even put three R's on it. Oh, <laughs> uh, I just want to tell before we leave... Uh, when I was in the Air Force in 1957, I, t I think I would talk to you about this. Excuse me. I came, uh, I came, flew with uh, some colonel. We stopped in Las Vegas. And who was at the Flamingo? There was only two places out on the Strip at the right. time. We used to use the Flamingo as the beacon. Yes. It was the tallest hotel in town. And you were there. Mm -hmm. You were there. Yeah. And I tell you, there were more jackrabbits out there. Now that it's all full now, of course. Listen, there's some jackrabbits there. I don't know, not jack, the little teeny things. They're here. But there's more <laughs> rabbits. <laughs> We thought we were looking at little, you know, little cement figures and things, no. and all of a sudden, what a move! We almost wrecked the car. I thought I never saw That's anything like this come alive. Yeah. And we stopped, and this fellow's riding this bicycle with those two wheels in the back, and he had a big sign on him. But we thought he must be one of the people that can tell you where you're lost. And uh, and he starts says, okay, "Are you all right?" I said, "That thing moved." <laughs> you know, and he says, "Oh, we got lots of rabbits around here." <laughs> so that's kind of fun. Well, we have the we have the folks who like rabbits and the folks who don't like well, rabbits. Well, isn't, <laughs> isn't it always the way? <laughs> oh, sure. They'd have a time way. getting to some of those roses. They must yeah. be eight feet tall. I know. I never I know. saw such tall roses and in my rabbits, life. And those rabbits, they just keep coming. They just, I tell you. You never heard about them? <laughs> <laughs> they multiply. Yes, they do. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway, I just uh, delighted to have you here. And I'm happy I'm, to be here. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the show tonight, of course. Thank you. And uh, hearing that big voice of yours that I've loved for so many years. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for My being pleasure. with us. All right, bye. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us tonight with Miss K-Star, A-Star. Good night. Two R's. Two R's. <laughs>